I haven't seen a whole lot of videos on YouTube about how defrost actually works on a residential unit. Um, I'm not going to force this unit into defrost because it's a little too warm for that today. Uh, if I get another chance, maybe on my unit or if I come by here, I'll uh, be able to do it when it's cooler outside. But this is a Nordine. It's my parents' condenser unit. Uh, there's the model number for you. Basically, this unit, well, to start from my experience, there's two different types of defrost for residential systems. One is time temperature defrost, and the other one is a demand defrost system. This one, as I said, is time temperature. What it does is it has a defrost thermostat, which is where these two wires connect on the board. One connects to the R terminal, one connects to a terminal called DFT. Um, and it has little timing pins on this board. I don't know if my camera will focus. They're 30, 60, 90. Most of them in this area we set to 90 in South Carolina, so it doesn't really stay that cold. Um, but I don't know if you can see, but down there at the bottom of that condenser coil is where the defrost thermostat attaches to. Basically, how the time temperature works is just like it sounds. Um, a defrost thermostat is normally open. The system will, as long as it has 24 volts powering the board are in common, um, it will power a timer in the control board and that will calculate runtime. Um, it doesn't have to be just one full 90 minute runtime. It can be 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there. It'll add up that total runtime until it gets to 90 minutes. Once it does, if that defrost thermostat is closed, saying that the coil is below whatever the factory sets the particular defrost thermostat to, um, if it's cold enough and the time has elapsed, it will go into defrost. It'll stay in defrost until one of two things happens. Either the defrost thermostat warms up enough to open, it'll immediately terminate defrost, or most residential systems that I've worked on will stay in defrost for a maximum of 10 minutes. Um, after that 10 minute time, it will terminate defrost regardless whether it's finished melting or not. So a lot of times you'll see if system's low on refrigerant or you're lacking airflow inside or something to that sort, um, you won't be able to generate enough heat in that 10 minute time frame to melt the ice on the coil. So the system will try and melt, it'll stay in defrost for 10 minutes, come out, um, and then it'll just be a snowball effect from there. It'll never really, really melt um, unless the temperature outside warms up or something along those lines. But that's how time temperature works. Uh, demand defrost system basically has an ambient a coil sensor. Um, they're not thermostats, they don't open and close, they're thermistors, they read resistance and the board is programmed that when those uh, resistors or those thermistors rather read a certain resistance that it'll go into defrost so it doesn't have to wait for a switch to open or close once it has a X amount of outdoor temperature just say 35 degrees outdoor temperature and the coil temperature drops to say 28 degrees those calculate to certain resistance and it will initiate a defrost um, if I come across a demand defrost system I'll probably make a short video on it but most of the stuff that I come across if it's not high efficient it's time temperature defrost 